everybody. Good morning. Good morning. It's great to see you all again. If you don't remember, uh, my name is Will. You can, you can call me Pastor Will. You can call me Teacher Will. But I'm so glad to see all of your, all of your beautiful faces once again. Um, first off, happy Mother's Day. I hope that you all told your moms that you love them. You should tell your moms that you love them every single day. But especially today, you should give them a big hug, maybe some kisses, and tell your moms you love them. Because your moms are the real MVPs. So you should thank them and tell them that you love them. So, if you have a question, you need to yeah. raise your hand. Yeah, is everyone listening? Everybody listening? Thank you. So we've been going through a new unit recently, and the big picture question has been, what is a miracle? Does anyone remember what the answer to that question was? Are you raising your hand? Ryan? A miracle is some amazing thing God does people Yeah. Actually, that's a great answer. That was, that was pretty solid. Wait, Hunky, you had your hand up. Did you want to? Never mind. Calvin? Anything to add? Yeah. So I'm going to put those two answers together. And if you can read, let's read this together. So a miracle is something God does that usually cannot be done so that we can know that he, he is all powerful. Cool. And if you remember, last week we learned the story of what happened. They, Rahab. Rahab. We learned about Rahab. We learned that they marched around the city of, Jer of Jericho seven times, and they blew a big trumpet, and they all shouted, and the walls came falling down, right? And they took the city. Yes. Do you have a question? Have that, have that story in our Bible. Yeah, that is in the Bible. All that we're going to talk about today is in the Bible. And so there was this... That was an incredible miracle, right? The walls came falling down. They went into the city, and they took the city for God. And today, we're going to learn about another miracle. We're going to see a different miracle today. But what I wanted to do was share about two different battles. And I want to ask you guys what the difference is between these two battles. So I need you all to listen closely, to pay attention, and, so we're gonna, and tell me the difference between these two battles. Okay. So the first one. There's a city called Ai, and Joshua, he sent spies to go look at the city of Ai, and the spies said this to Joshua. They said, um, there's no need for all of us to go up there. It won't take more than two or 3,000 men to attack Ai. Since there are so few of them, don't make all our people go struggle to go up there. So essentially, what they're saying is, they're saying, we don't need all of our soldiers, they're so, we're so much bigger, we're so much stronger than them, we got this, this is going to be easy, we can take care of it ourselves, right? And so, you know what, what they're essentially doing is that they saw this really incredible miracle with the walls of Jericho falling down, and they took over the city, and they thought, because they saw that crazy miracle, they thought that it was because they were so strong. They thought it was because they were so powerful. And so they thought, God, we don't need you. We can do this ourselves. We're bigger than them. We're, we're stronger than them. We can do it. Let's go take the city of Ai. And they got really confident. They got really overconfident. They got really proud. And you know, do you know what happened? They, they lost. They got their butts kicked. And they ran away. And they were embarrassed. And they were really sad, right? Because they forgot. They forgot that it was God who delivered them the victory. They forgot that it was God who made the walls fall down. They forgot that it was God who helped them to take over the city of Jericho, right? And rather than depend on God's strength and God's power, they thought they were strong. They depended on themselves. And I think we do that too sometimes, right? Many times when we go through hard times, when we pray to God and we ask him for help, and then he helps us, and then we go through those tough times, sometimes we forget that God is the one who helped us. We think that we're the ones who took care of it ourselves. We think we got through it ourselves. It's kind of like, can you imagine one day you wake up and you're like, you know, I'm a healthy boy or I'm a healthy, I'm a healthy kid. I'm pretty strong. I'm pretty healthy. 
And so, you know what? Mom and dad, I don't need you anymore. I can take care of myself. And so, see you later. I'm leaving. Bye, guys. What would happen, right? You probably wouldn't, you probably wouldn't last very long, right? Because without your mom and dad, who's going to feed you? Who's going who's gonna to take you to school? Who's going who's gonna to comfort you when you're sad or when you're scared at night? Who's going to help you when you fall and you trip and you hurt yourself? Who's going to help you, right? Without your mom and your dad, you probably wouldn't last very long, right? And that's silly, right? That would be a big mistake, right? Leah, do you have a question? Oh. Oh, that is true. See, that's why you need parent. Yeah. And so and so that would be a big mistake, right? If we one day were like, "Mom and dad, I don't need you anymore. I'm going to go off by myself." That would be a big mistake, right? But that's exactly what the Israelites did to God. They thought, "God, we we conquered these cities. God, we can take care of it ourselves. We got this." Calvin? You have a question? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You make your own armor. Nice. I love that. So that was the first battle, right? The battle against AI, where they thought they relied on their own strength rather than God, and then they lost this battle, right? So we're going to watch a video which is going to teach us about the second battle. Okay, and then pay attention to the difference between this battle and the first battle that we talked about. Okay, so let's watch this video together. God gave the people the land. God was with his people when they entered the promised land. Joshua and the Israelites defeated the cities of Jericho and Ai. They made peace with the people of Gibeon. Then, one day, a king called to four other kings. These kings did not love God or worship him, but they had heard about God's people and they were afraid. The first king said, Gibeon made peace with Joshua and the Israelites. Help me attack Gibeon. So the five kings joined forces and went up with all their armies to fight against Gibeon. Soon the men of Gibeon sent a message to Joshua, help us. Save us! All the kings in this land are fighting against us! So Joshua and his whole army went to help Gibeon. The Lord said to Joshua, Do not be afraid of the kings, for I have handed them over to you. Not one of them will be able to stand against you. So Joshua and his army marched all night and surprised the five kings' armies. As the Israelites fought, God confused the king's armies and helped Israel to defeat their enemies. The five kings' armies fled, but God sent hail to stop them. But the battle wasn't over yet. Joshua needed more time to fight before the sun went down. So Joshua prayed to God, Sun, stand still over Gibeon, and moon over the valley. The sun stood still, and the moon stopped for almost a full day. Israel and Gibeon defeated the five kings. As the Israelites traveled in the promised land, they took over many other cities. God fought for his people and helped them conquer the land that God had promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Then for many years, God gave the Israelites peace and rest from their enemies. So, it, May, it might have been a little hard to hear, but th in this second battle, they were up against five armies. There were five kings that, that were fighting against Israel. And this is a, that's pretty tough, right? It's one army against five. Who do you think should? There were technically two armies. Yes, you're correct. Uh, so two armies, but the, the Gibeonites, they asked Israel to help. So it's two versus five. Who would probably win that? Usually the five, right? That's a really tough battle but we saw what happened here, right? Joshua prayed to God, and God said, do not, what, do not fear them, for I have given them into your hands. And so what was the difference between the first battle and the second battle, would you say? Yes? The first battle, the, the second battle won, and the first one won. 
Yeah, they lost the first battle and they won the second battle. Right, Calvin? Yeah. 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 So in the first battle, Israelites, they were much bigger than the, sec than the other one, right? They, they were fighting against Ai, and they were much bigger, but they still lost, right? Because they didn't have God. But the second, even though it was two versus five, because they prayed to God, they depended on God, God did these incredible miracles. Did you guys hear some of the miracles that God did? Anyone? Ryan, you've been raising your hand a lot, so I'm going to... Yeah, the sun and moon stayed still. So it was day, it was daytime for even longer, right? So they could keep defeating the armies, right? They also, Ryan? He confused the armies. Great job. He also made, he also made hail fall from the sky to keep them from running away. And so here, because they depended on God, God did these incredible miracles, and for that reason, we saw the two armies defeat the five armies, right? And this is exactly what we said a miracle is, right? This miracle is something that only God can do, right? Because can, can any of us make the sun stop? No. Sometimes we might wish the sun stopped so that we can go outside and play for longer, but we can't do that, right? Only God can do that, and it shows that he is all-powerful, right? And, and, and for us, when we go through our biggest battles, we can also trust that God will be with us and deliver us, right? But do you guys know what, for us as people, what our biggest battle is against? What, what is our biggest battle? Is it against Thanos? Is it against the Green Goblin? Is it against Darth Vader? No, it's against Judah? Yeah, it's against sin. The sin that's within us is our biggest battle, right? This sin that might make us think that we don't need anyone else, that we can take care of ourselves. This sin that might make us be mean to our siblings or to our parents who love us. But did you guys know that God already delivered us and, and give us the victory against this battle against sin? How did he do that? He did it by sending his son Jesus down to the, to the world, right? To live a perfect life and to die on the cross for our sins. And then when he resurrected three days later, he showed that he is victorious, that he has defeated sin and he has defeated death, right? So if God has taken care of our biggest battle, if God has given us victory over our biggest battle, then we can trust and depend on him that when we go through different struggles every day, when we feel helpless in our sin, that God can help us when we pray to him, when we ask him for help and we depend on him, God will be our strength and he will help us. Any last questions? Calvin, do you have a question? No? A question or how much volunteer money can Rocket and Bob Yeah. Those are bad guys. But you know, our sin is our biggest battle that God has already given us the victory over through Jesus. Okay? Um, Ryan, I'll get to you later. Okay. So I want to end with our memory verse for today, for this unit. If you can read with me, uh, please read along. But if you can't, just listen along, OK? Let's read together. One, two, three. You are the God who works wonders. You revealed your strength among the peoples. Psalm 75, verses 14. All right, amen. And now we're going to have our intercessory prayer. And so 